Good morning and welcome to Christ Church. It's really good to see you this morning. Just a quick question. Who thinks the clocks going forward is a good idea? You're on your own. That's it. That's it. That's it. I wanted to look up on Wikipedia who came up with it because I want to write them a sticky worded letter. I suspect they've probably long since passed away very wisely. They're going to get blamed for all sorts of things. I did get up this morning, went downstairs, and the dog just looked at me and went, <laughs> what, what were you doing? Ridiculous. Today is, of course, Mothering Sunday. We're going to watch a short Mothering Sunday video. Uh, um, next one, please. And you'll need to press it one more time. Happy Mother's Day, Sarah. After waiting to have a child for so many years, you must be overjoyed to have Isaac. Today is about you and all those who are still waiting. Happy Mother's Day, midwives of Israel. You risked your own safety to ensure the survival of countless children. Today is about you and all those who care for children and call it work. Happy Mother's Day, daughter of Pharaoh. By welcoming Moses and your family, you showed so much love. Today is about you and all foster and adoptive parents. Happy Mother's Day, Naomi. You walked with Ruth as a friend and cared for a child as your own grandchild. Today is about you and all grandmothers and extended family who care for children. Happy Mother's Day, Hannah. You let go of Samuel, even though it hurt you. Today is about you and all those whose children are not living with them right now. Happy Mother's Day, Emma. Life didn't go as you had hoped, yet you found peace and worth in your service to God. Today is about you and all those experiencing heartache but how things have turned out. Happy Mother's Day, Lois and Eunice. Your faith changed Timothy's life. Today is about all those who are playing a part in raising the next generation. Mother's Day is about you, whatever your role might be. So, I shall leave that without comment. A couple of notices before we begin. If this is your first time here, welcome. There are some welcome cards in our pews. If you'd like us to keep in contact with you, we'd love to. Please throw one in and either give to uh, one of the guys at the back afterwards or you can leave it with me. That would be cool as well. Uh, a couple of other things. Experience Easter begins tomorrow. Um, that's something where we welcome children from our local schools into this building. Um, I could ask more incense, or shall I? What? I? Apparently I'm going. Excellent. We'll be doing 200, 200 children over the course of next week. We'll be welcomed here into this building where they're going to learn something about what Easter is. Uh, it's a really, really good thing. For many kids, it'll be the first time um, they've heard that story, what Easter is and what it means. So if you are a, a, a prayer, praying over that this week would be fantastic. Uh, Craft Club meets again this Wednesday, and uh, um, it'd be great if you're able to join us for that. You don't have to be crafty, you can be pointed in the right direction to dance as well. Uh, Jill and I were at the uh, New Wine Leadership Conference a couple of weeks back, and uh, there's about 1,500 of us up in Harrogate, and uh, one of the guys who was there was a pastor from the Ukraine. Um, and uh, it was very difficult to know what kind of response, what we could say to someone who uh, uh, works. Um, he actually lives in the UK, pastors a church over here. Very difficult to know what response to give, but actually what he did get was a standing ovation for about 10 minutes. Uh, um, I don't know what else we could do. We would just say, you know, we support you, we love you, God is with you. Uh, with us today is Anna. Um, Anna, just, I'm, I'm not going to draw attention to you particularly, but Anna's here. Anna is uh, Anna's uh, mum and grandma were in Ukraine. They're no longer in Ukraine. They're currently. Uh, uh, safely at Tina's house, but thanks to the generosity of so many people here, we've been able to help uh, uh, Anna bring um, mum and grandma back again. I, I mean, applauding seems ridiculous, uh, uh, but I, I think it's really good that Anna's able to be here with her family, and I'm so pleased we've been able to help. Um, but the crisis doesn't stop. 
he moves on. And one of the things we're doing as a church is uh, um, giving money to a Mission Without Borders. Mission Without Borders are one of our mission partners, and they are on the ground uh, uh, with the good news of Jesus Christ, yes, but helping practically as well. So in an unusual move, second video of the morning. In what is likely to be Europe's largest refugee crisis this century, our local staff, volunteers and church partners are now responding to the refugee crisis in whatever way they can. In Palanca, Moldova, our community centre is welcoming families and children, providing hot meals and mattresses to sleep on. Our partner churches in Moldova and Romania are providing meals and a place to sleep to refugees. Would you help us now to provide food, clothing and shelter to Ukrainians? Your gift could make all the difference. Please donate today. For those who receive our weekly email, you'll know that uh, uh, last week the PCC um, decided that we were going to give our annual gift to Mission Without Borders, which is normally £2,000. We're going to give it early during the year because uh, the crisis is now. We've also increased it to £5,000. Uh, um, and Phil, is just, who is our treasurer, for those that don't know, is just going to come and tell us a little bit about that. First of all, I'd like to apologise for not talking to you standing on my head, because that would give a better representation of the Ukrainian flag. <laughs> <laughs> As Simon just said, the PCC gave, uh, or voted to give Mission Without Borders £5,000 now, rather than £2,000 in November based on earnings from Alistair Darling in times of crisis, don't think it can go early. I, I'm talking to you now because back in 2013, I went on a Mission Without Borders supporters tour to Moldova. And what I saw there, what was pointed out to me was the effects following the breakdown of the Soviet Union where Russia had extracted from the country any plant of any use or value and any personnel who could operate the plant leaving a really bereft country and Moldova was the poorest country in, uh, in Europe Moldova borders Ukraine to the north and west and Romania and it's landlocked by both of those. The infrastructure of Mission Without Borders is, is it raises money from 12 of the wealthy countries around the world and distributes it to six of the poorest countries in Eastern Europe. They are Ukraine, Moldova, Romania, Bulgaria, Albania and Bos Bosnia-Herzegovina. So talking about infrastructure, it is ideally suited to help the, the victims of the Russian invasion to, to the Ukraine. It's in the Ukraine and it's in two of the big neighbouring countries to the south and west. It operates in schools and orphanages, supporting children and families. This is in the peacetime support, um, make, making sure the children have a good meal uh, one, once a day, and, uh, and, and adding to that the offering of Christian teaching. Obviously now it's added to that soup kitchens and refugee camps both inside and in the countries bordering Ukraine. So it is the ideal charity, I think, to direct our support to the Ukrainian uh, 
escapees, if that's the right word, people trying to, to get out of the country or trying to li live within the country, um, Mission Without Borders is there already to support them. So um, please, uh, if you wish to, if you wish to add to the donation the PCC has made, there's a collection box at the back, uh, mark your donation for Ukraine, and we'll add it to what we're sending to Mission Without Borders. Thank you. Thanks, Phil. Well, the words you need this morning are up on the screen, uh, and if you are having difficulty seeing that, there are some paper copies available um, from the Bank of the Church. The words in bold are the ones we respond with, the words in lighter type are our name. Young and old, we are all his children. The family of God are here to worship him. And we're going to worship God in song now as we stand to sing our first hymn this morning, The God of Love, My Shepherds. Thanksgiving, some words and response. So we light this candle to remind us that the love of God is like a light in our darkness. Blessed be God. We praise you, our God, for all mothers who have loved and laughed and laboured as they cared for their children. Blessed be God for them. We praise you, our God, for all who mother, but still more, what might have been. Blessed be God's Father. We praise you, our God, for all mothers who have wept in sorrow and joy for their children. Blessed be God's Father. We praise you, our God, for Jesus, born of a woman and nurtured in her life, and for men, a reminder of your patience, waiting on. Blessed be God, for him. So we come to our time of confession. So let us call to mind our sin, our failure to value the love of others, 
and our failure to love as Christ has first loved us. Heavenly Father, your love gives us life from the moments of conception. We fail to live as your children. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You call us to do good, yet we seek our own good. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You hear us when we cry for help, yet we ignore the cries of others. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins and restore you in his image to the praise and glory of his name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. To have our first reading, please. I can't remember who was doing that this morning. Sarah, are you able to do that? Oh, I lost Sarah this morning as well. Oh, there she is. <laughs> Thank you. reading is from Exodus chapter 2 verses 1 to 10. Now a man of the tribe of Levi married a Levite woman and she became pregnant and gave birth to a son. When she saw that he was a fine child she hid him for three months but when she could hide him no longer she got a papyrus basket for him and coated it with tar and pitch. Then she placed the child in it and put it among the reeds along the bank of the Nile. His sister stood at a distance to see what would happen to him. Then Pharaoh's daughter went down to the Nile to bathe, and her attendants were walking along the river bank. She saw the basket among the reeds and sent her female slave to get it. She opened it and saw the baby. He was crying and she felt sorry for him. This is one of the Hebrew babies, she said. Then his sister asked Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and get one of the Hebrew women to nurse the baby for you? Yes, go, she answered. So the girl went and got the baby's mother. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this baby and nurse him for me, and I will pay you. So the woman took the baby and nursed him. When the child grew older, she took him to Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. She named him Moses, saying, I drew him out of the water. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We are uh, very blessed here to have um, so many people who are able to do uh, so much. We're blessed with our readers. We're blessed with our, our curate, who, uh, who was, he likes early mornings, so I put him on the rotor for this morning, but then he got Covid. <laughs> Very annoying. Uh, however, um, recently we have been uh, uh, joined by, um, uh, by, by Gwyneth and by Rob, who are uh, both ordained and have both offered to, to um, take up PTO roles, that is permission to officiate, which means that uh, the bishop says that these people are good to be able to preach and to be able to lead services of communion. Um, but I thought it would be a good thing to be able to, to affirm them and for them to be able to say that they are uh, happy to uh, use those gifts for us as well. Also at this time, um, Jill Heron, who I have heard of, has uh, um, uh, been authorised by the diocese to lead services of worship. It's not the same as being a reader, it's a slightly different role. Uh, but it also means that Jill is able to lead services in church as well, um, which is a really good thing. So what I'm going to do is I'll ask Rob and Gwyneth and Jill if they can come up to the front, please. <laughs> I 
I guess yeah. she doesn't want to stand any, Jill doesn't want to stand any closer to it. Yeah. Right? Isn't it? These are just a few words of, of commissioning. Um, I'm going to be asking these guys uh, uh, a question. Um, don't worry, the response is on the screen, and it's just, I do. Um, um, and then we'll be praying for them as well. But in his letter to the Ephesians, St. Paul tells us how some are called to be apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, or teachers. The church has recognised gifts in you three. So I ask, do you accept God's call to use your gifts to serve God and his church here in this place? Right stuff. I'm going to pray for Gwyneth and for Rob and for Jill and then for probably a fool or something like that. So let's just uh, pray for them. Heavenly Father, I thank you for Gwyneth and for Rob and for Jill. Thank you for the skills and talents they have and for their willingness and desire to use those gifts and talents for you in this church, in this place. Heavenly Father, may they know your love and your strength as they take on those roles. May they know that they have our supports and your supports. And may you bless them mightily and us as they serve you here. Amen. Can we applaud? We are very blessed to have them out the they're having to talk to you and make a coffee or something after the service if you'd like to talk to them. They're, they're quite friendly. All right. Guys, thank you so much. Thank you. I've never heard any of them sing, but the next hit this morning is Angel Voices. So I'm hoping that's prophetic. We're going to stand to sing our second hymn this morning. Angel Voices, let us sing.
take our seats again for our second reading. Jesus' father and mother marvelled at what was said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, This child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that we will be spoken against, that will be spoken against, so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you. The advantage of having a daughter who doesn't come to church very often means I can do loads of stories about her and she can't complain. When she was much younger, we asked Katie what she wanted to be when she grew up. Now, I don't know if any of you have met Katie. Katie just about is five foot tall. She claims she's taller than her mother. She's not. <laughs> we asked Katie what she wanted to be when she grew up, and she said, I want to be a ninja or a basketball player. <laughs> there is no way she could ever be a basketball player. She just does not have the height. Ninja, I'm afraid I can't tell. It's a secret society, and apparently she'll kill me if I do. But I wonder what hopes and dreams you had for yourself when uh, you were a chance. Maybe you should ask. Did anybody have anything interesting they wanted to be when they were a child that they're not, that they didn't end up doing? Nothing that anybody wants to admit to. Yeah, oh, there's a... I, I, if I was going to guess anybody was going to say anything, I'd have put money on Shirley Collins. Yes, you did wait. It's very funny. Go on, Shirley. Um, when I sat there, my teacher said, what do you want to be? Hold on. Francis, can I have the, um, wait, thank you. When I was about five years old and my first teacher said, what would you like to be? I couldn't decide if I wanted to be a nun and live in a convent or dance around like Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> and I've still not quite decided not to. <laughs> well, that, that, that's an interesting combination. Anybody else want to admit to anything? Oh, Carolyn. Let's ask Carolyn. Ooh, this is the fittest I'm ever going to be. Well, when I was little, I wanted to be a bus driver. Oh! And I still quite enjoy driving big vehicles, but I never did a bus driver. Oh, what a shame! <laughs> that would be awesome. Bus, dri bus driver, train driver. Anybody else? No one's ah, Chris. We're actually getting people to admit stuff now. Now the floodgates are open. You said the very word. That I wanted to be an engine driver. Uh, the nearest I came to it was uh, fairly recently uh, in the engine, uh, driving all the way from the race course um, out to Broadway. Wow. Uh, people on that train didn't know. <laughs> This very inexperienced person <laughs> who was helping to drive. Fantastic stuff. Thomas the Tank Engine has a lot to answer for for a, a lot of people's desires and dreams. Anybody else want to admit to anything? No. Oh, hold on. Yes. Oh, oh. the pump. Hold on. Is this still something you want to do? Yeah. Go ahead. Um, I don't know if I want to be a police or a fashion designer. Police one or fashion designer? That's some of the things I've worn. I'd be arrested by the fashion police. So if you could do both jobs simultaneously, that's fantastic. Excellent stuff. It's not. I know that people often end up doing. Uh, my other son Benjamin wanted to be a computer games programmer when he was younger, and we've been telling him no, no, nobody ends up doing that. Uh, um, of course, now he's doing that, and I feel highly foolish when he spends hours and hours earning a very good living. Playing games. The job I wish I'd had. But I wonder if any of you, um, I, I quite fancy being a rock star. Not being able to sing or play it, but I can sing and play guitar, but not well enough, unfortunately. Perhaps you are someone who maybe likes writing. You wanted to write books or something like that, being an author. Um, 
I guess sometimes we have hopes and dreams, if we've had children, we have hopes and dreams for our children as well. We kind of think maybe they're going to do something and they end up doing something entirely different. And for Mothering Sunday, the two readings we had this morning are, are the set lectionary readings, the Church of England readings for Mothering Sunday. And that second one we heard is from Luke's Gospel. It's an interesting one. For a start, it is indecently short. By the time it's finished, it's hardly started. So a little bit of context is vital. So here is uh, the story so far. Chapter 2 of Luke's Gospel has the birth of Jesus. There are some shepherds in the fields. There's a choir of angels. And that's all before we even come close to the verses we heard earlier. This is where Jesus is being presented in the temple, as was the tradition of the time. There were purification rites that were required by law. Mary and Joseph have taken the infant Jesus to the temple, and there they meet a righteous and devout man called Simeon. I like that. It's close. <laughs> the Holy Spirit has revealed to Simeon that he isn't going to die, before he meets the promised Messiah. And prompted by the same Holy Spirit, Simeon goes into the temple courts, and this is where Jesus is presented. Now, immediately before the bit we heard, Simeon uh, says these words, um, variations of which we hear most Sundays. Uh, Simeon says this, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations, a light of a revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people earlier. Mary and Joseph marvelled at these words. The Bible tells us they marvelled at what Simeon said to them, and rightly so. If you've just been told those things, Simeon says, I've seen uh, uh, your salvation in the form of this baby. That's a really odd thing, I guess, for parents to hear about their child. But I wonder how they felt as Simeon goes on. Because the next bit of what he says is a difficult here. The child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many of Israel, and to be a sign that will be spoken against so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed. That, I think, is an ouch moment. Great stuff, what, this, what Simeon says about, about this boy Jesus, and then there's this. No one ever said being a parent would be easy. There's no guarantee given that there are going to be years of constant smiling and joy before you release your offspring out into the world to be happy, to be successful, we loved. If only you were given a my child is a winner sticker for every chance we have. Because you don't know what can lie in store. If anything, it's the opposite. Yes, there are joys, there's happiness, but there's also times of worry and concern. And for the first time, parents, Mary and Joseph, and especially I think for Mary who Simeon directs the last of his remarks to, he has a prophecy, which I think is an extraordinary, uh, an extraordinary thing to say. Simeon says this, he says to Mary, a sword will pierce your soul. Ouch, again. They don't know the intricate twists and turns that are gonna make up Jesus' journey. But for any parents, that their child lead a peaceful life has to be fairly near the top of the list. Unlike those kind of end of peer fortune tellers who have nothing but platitudes to give, sweet words, guarantees, and no disaster. Simeon paints a picture that looks a bit difficult at best. So, how does Mary respond? Well, Mary appears several times throughout all the Gospels. She kind of pops up at various times in Jesus' life. There is that pre-pregnancy chat with a news-bearing angel. We hear every Christmas in the 
run up to Christmas Day. And then we have the obvious well known birth narrative. We meet Mary there again. Then there is back for Jesus' first miracle, the wedding at Cana. Jesus and his disciples are at a marriage celebration. Mary, his mother, Jesus' mother is invited as well. The wine runs out. Mary hears about it. And Jesus, somewhat reluctantly, steps in to help at his mum's request. Who can say no to their mum? Certainly not that son. Mary seems to know that Jesus is capable of something. I'm not entirely sure that in that wedding at Cana, when Mary says to Jesus, the wine's run out, I don't know exactly what she expected him to do. But anyway, that's, the miracle happens, the wine flows. We don't actually hear what Mary's reaction is. We don't know whether she went, oh, well done, son. We have no idea at all. That's early in John's gospel. Near the beginning of Mark's account, we find Mary and Jesus' brothers trying to rescue him from a crowd of people. These crowd have heard the things he was doing and saying. They're beginning to gather around. They're beginning to surround Jesus at every opportunity. They want to hear more. They want to see more. And Mark records that his family, so Mary and Jesus' brothers, have come to get him because they were saying, he is out of his mind. Mark records that Jesus hears, someone tells Jesus that his mother and brothers are there. And then he asks his listeners, who are my mother and brothers? And looking at those seated around him, he said, here are my mother and brothers. Whoever does, God, whoever does God's will is my mother, my brother and my sister. So we have a mother who trusts in her son, in John's account of the wedding of Cana. We have a mother who worries about her son in Mark. And then in Luke, we have a story found nowhere else, which also features Joseph as well. We hear about Joseph as a preteen, just 12 years old. A family trip to the Passover in Jerusalem, and on the return journey, Mary and Joseph Assuming that Jesus is travelling with the larger group back to their hometown, discover that that isn't the case. They discover that Jesus, 12-year-old Jesus, isn't with them. They hurry back, and after an extensive search, they find Jesus sitting in the temple, asking and answering questions. And we hear what Mary says to Jesus. She says this, after they find him, Son, why have you treated us like this? Your father and I have been anxiously searching for you. Why are you searching for me? Jesus replies, Don't you know I had to be at my father's house? And then Luke, in a bit of editorial, says this, They did not understand what Jesus was saying to them. Confused, but still loving parents. You may recognise confusion, maybe from when you were a preteen. And if you're anything like me, you're going, my mum and dad don't understand me. Anybody else recognise that? They don't understand me. There's no, yeah. And if anybody's sitting with a parent this morning, don't worry. Don't worry. They understand. And as parents as well, in shorter moments than our own children we go, I just don't understand. There's love, but confusion as a parent frequently reigns. Well, Mary does appear in uh, the Max, but practically the last gospel appearance we have from Mary is at the foot of the cross. John's gospel tells them that she is there alongside Mary, confusingly, uh, the wife of Clopas, his aunt, and Mary Magdalene. So at least three Marys at, uh, uh, at the foot of the cross. Just confusion reigns there again. And Jesus speaks from the cross to his mother and to the person who John refers to as the disciple Jesus loved. Quite possibly John himself. He tells his mother that John 
is her son and the disciple that this is his mother. Not kind of, not a soap opera revelation of some kind of uh, uh, different parentage, but an underlining of how all those that love and follow Jesus should see each other. We are all his family. So on Mothering Sunday, what was Mary's experience of being a mother? Joy? Tears? Trust? Worry? And all this about her boy, her son, who would end up piercing her heart. There is a uh, Christian author called L.R. Cost, who among other things, she is a, a child development researcher and a director of an advocacy and consulting group and a mother of six. And she wrote this. It's not our job to toughen our children to face a cruel and heartless world. It's our job to raise children who will make the world a little less cruel and heartless. It's not our job to toughen our children to face a cruel and heartless world. It's our job to raise children who will make the world a little less cruel and heartless. I wonder how Mary would have responded to receiving that advice in the face of what Simeon said. Certainly it seems to me that the child she brought grew up to be the man who did just that. And so much more. But in the face of a distrusting world, we all have a responsibility to help form the minds and lives of our children in our homes, yes, but in our schools, in our church, in our community. At the end of our services of baptism, all members of the church are reminded that it is all of our duty to support young people in prayer, by example, and by teaching. All of us, everyone, Parents and godparents are reminded that they have the prime responsibility, but we all have that responsibility as well. Parents and godparents are reminded that they need, uh, um, that when they're guiding and helping children in their early years, they are told it is a demanding task, says the baptism service, which you will need the help and grace of God. Who knew? You need the help and grace of God. To help bring up children. And today we have a small Mothering Sunday gift for anyone who takes on a mothering role. And I do not think that is exclusively for those who are mothers. It is as much uh, anybody else as well. There's a wonderful line in the Bible where uh, um, uh, Jesus talk, um, the Bible talks about um, people being gathered in by God as a mother hen gathers her chicks. So there's that kind of saying, it's not about having given birth to someone, it's about taking on that role in whatever form it is. And I don't think that's defined by gender, sex, or anything else. So we have enough of these to give to everybody. It's a little bag, and it just says, Mother of Sunday, a gift from Christchurch children. And it is in it three bits of chocolate, which is better than one piece of chocolate. By <laughs> 200%. But it's a bag with three hearts. And the reason there are three hearts in there is this. Firstly, there's a heart to remind us that God loves each of us. Second heart to remind us that we are called to love and care for our children. And when I say our children, that's the children of our community, our society, our locality not defined only by those that we've been involved with uh, uh, personally. But that third heart is to remind us that the lives of our children will pierce our hearts as parents or not. We're going to pray in a second, but my main prayer, if 
fast as though we all find God's strength in acting in a mothering capacity, whatever way that is. May we all find God's strength as Mary did to act in his service. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, Mary, who gave birth to your son, Jesus Christ, was a woman who trusted, was a woman who cared, was a woman who loved. May each of us know that you have given us all the responsibility to look after the children who are in this community, in our wider community. May we know that you love us. May we know that you have called us to love and care for our children. And when our hearts are pierced, because of the lives of our children, may we know your strength to love. Amen. We will be handing those bags out during the final uh, uh, hymn this morning. For now, we are going to stand and sing again. Make me a channel of your peace. standing uh, to say together our statements of faith. So let us declare our faith in God, say together. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. So if you'd like to take your seats, the choir, they're going to sing a song.
Thank you. So this is the collects or special prayer for Mother and Son. Gods of compassion, whose son Jesus Christ, the child of Mary, shared the life of a hundred Nazareth, and on the cross, Jew drew the whole human family to himself. Strengthen us in our daily life, that in joy and in sorrow we may know the power of your presence, to bind together and to heal. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So, uh, General is now going to lead us in our prayers. There will be silence after each prayer for us to make our own prayers. And we will respond. When I say, Lord, in your mercy, respond with, hear our prayer. Let us pray. Today is Mothering Sunday, and we think especially of our mothers. Lord, thank you for all the love and care they gave us, for all the nurturing and teaching us how to live. So let's think of our mum or somebody else that stood in that place for us and give thanks for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Thank you, Lord, Anna has been able to bring her mum and grandma safely out of Ukraine. Thank you for the safe space here in Chantham. We pray especially for all those mothers and children fleeing Ukraine. For safety and a swift resettlement. We pray for Mission Without Borders as they seek to give aid to many people. We thank you for the generosity of the PCC giving money to them. We pray this money will be used wisely. We pray for a swift end to the conflict, for all those negotiating for peace, that they will have wisdom. Let's offer our own prayers for Ukraine. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. North Korea is conducting missile tests. We pray for all those who build these missiles, that they will change and use their skills for good. The tensions escalating between China and Japan over some islands that agreement can be reached. We pray for Christians in North Korea, for more freedom for them. Let's pray for those areas of the world where there is conflict. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer.
We think of the situation in Afghanistan where women and girls are not allowed education. So many want education and to play a part in society. And we pray for the softening of the Taliban's rule. For Afghan society to rebuild after the many years of conflict. For aid agencies working there to reach all in need. Let's pray for Afghanistan. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our church meeting next week, for willing volunteers for the PCC and church wardens. Thank you, Lord, for the many people who do things, looking after the building, looking after elderly people, families, and anyone in need of help. Let's give thanks for our church here, for our friends and family, our community. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. We pray for the sick in our church family and friends. For Richard, Anne, June, Margaret, Jane, Jack and Dee, Rose, Anne. Susan, William, Jane, Keith, Anne, Anthea, Nicola, Sam. We pray, Lord, for your healing, for your comfort for them, for the skill of the doctors who treat them. Now we conclude our prayers with the prayer Jesus himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us Offering Sunday gifts to anyone who'd like to take one in the final hymn this morning. We're going to stand to sing. Tell out my soul the greatness of the Lord.
like to take one too because you think that someone uh, uh, deserves one, needs one, um, please take one too, however many you'd like to take with you when you leave this morning. If you'd like to come and have coffee first, that'd be great too. So we say together our closing prayer. Gods of love, passionate and strong, tender and watch over us and hold us all the days of our life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So may God, who gave birth to all creation, bless you. May God, who became incarnate by an earthly mother, bless you. May God, who broods as a mother over her children, bless you. And may Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.